Hey everybody, I am going to be sharing with you how I created this tag and I'm going to be using some Ken Oliver color burst powders. I, for some reason I always want to say sprays, but they're powders. And all of the supplies will be listed down below. So if you're curious where I got something or you want to pick something up or you want more information on something, uh, all of the links will be listed down below. And I do need to give a huge shout out to Cynthia Emmerich. I recently started a Patreon page, so there is lots of fun things that I have planned for over there uh, once it hits the first, because that's when uh, it kind of starts. Um, but be sure to uh, head on over there if you want to learn more and the different tiers and the perks and all that sort of thing. So big shout out to Cynthia. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I truly appreciate it. And I'm super excited for this uh, new journey and it does not take away from me making videos for YouTube. It's just something extra that I'm going to be doing and I can't wait for this journey. Uh, the link will be down in the description as well. All right, with that out of the way, I am using a Prima chipboard tag and I used some gesso and then I put some crackle paste on it. I had already done this previous uh, when I did the last tag because I was planning on doing two and then ended up just doing one. So I had this on hand with the uh, gesso and the crackle paste already on it. Then I am using a stamp and some stays on to kind of give it a little bit more texture um, and some uh, just something else to the background. And then I added a little bit of gesso over top to kind of tone down the black a little bit. And then I'm adding, then I added some um, Crafters Workshop Light and Fluffy Paste, or yes, I believe that's what it's called, and a with a stencil. And then after that dries, I am now taking the Color Burst Powder, and this is turquoise. And I have a few other videos where I go into more depth of what I like about them, what I don't like about them, um, and I go over all of the colors and the different properties and different things like that. Um, and so I will be sure to link them in the upper right hand corner for you guys. Uh, and they are really amazing product, although I do say, and I will continuously say, they are just very messy. <laughs> so I, for probably weeks, I continue to wipe down my surface, my desk, and I will always get just little pigments of powder. Um, and I try to, um, you know, get my mat and some paper towels and whatever I need to, to protect my desk but it just doesn't ever seem like enough. It's just the powder is just everywhere. It's very fine powder and there is no uh, mica in it. There's no shimmer. That's why I love it so much because I love the matte color uh, for most things. Um, so that's why I love it. And um, you could watercolor with them. You can do all sorts of things with them. Um, but this next color I'm adding now is burnt orange and so I just kind of sprinkle on a little bit of the color and then spray it with some water and then I'll even go in with um, like a paintbrush and it's very damp, it's not very wet at all just to kind of move around the powders, kind of activate them or else you get some um, powder um, like the little um, specks that just kind of sit on top and don't really... Um, activate with the water that you just spray on so I just kind of move it around a little bit I hope that's making sense <laughs> um, so I am going to continue to add water and move the color around back and forth side to side and then I'll kind of blot up some of the color and then add a little bit more color I wasn't really going for the brown tone that I got in the end I was trying to go for uh, like the turquoise and orange colors. I had made a art journal page a while ago and I loved it so much. I loved the colors. I loved the just everything about it. So I was trying to kind of recreate that on the tag. Uh, although I did you I didn't use uh, the Finnebear stamps 
um, cause I put some butterflies on it. I'll have it linked in the upper right hand corner for you guys if you wanna check it out. Uh, it's probably one of my favorite art journal pages um, that I have created. Uh, but anyway, so I um, was trying to recreate that and in the end I ended up with a more of like a brown color instead of like an orangey, um, like yellow tone um, mixed in with the turquoise color. I just added a, little, added a little bit too much water, I think, and then that's why I got more of a brown uh, color rather than the orange that I was hoping for. Uh, anyway, so I continue to add a little bit of the color, then a little bit of the, the water, and then um, I want a really concentrated color. So what I do is I he heat it with the heat tool so that it just dries as is instead of adding more water and then letting it kind of drip down or um, something like that. So on the top of the tag, kind of like in the center top, I wanted it to be more white than um, anything else. So I was trying to uh, add some gesso and I kind of blot up some of the color and then I use the paper towel and it's a little bit wet and then I'll kind of blend the gesso into the, the color and then uh, here I am using my heat tool and adding the gesso. This helps it stay tacky and it applies better onto whatever surface you're wanting uh, just because when it's tacky, it just kind of sits on top rather than mixing in with the color, uh, especially because the Ken Oliver um, uh, powders are water soluble or you know they react to water so they will the gesso will kind of pick up some of that color and i was trying to avoid some of that and using the heat tool to kind of make it tacky uh, helps a lot with that all right so after it was almost dry as you could see i was getting some color on my stamp here and some gesso and um, some paste and stuff i'm uh, very impatient so i like to work fast uh, anyway, so I'm using some more stays on ink and adding some more stamping just to add more texture to the tag. And then after that, well, here is a little up close look. You can see all that texture. And here are some metal pieces. This is a Finnebear, or yes, a Mechanicals uh, clock face, and then a Prima metal piece. Uh, and these were just kind of in my bucket of stuff, my bin of stuff, uh, but I will try to have all of the links listed down below for you guys. All right, so on my art journal page, I had um, wrapped some string around the pages, kind of like how I'm doing here, kind of crisscrossing it uh, and layering it on top of each other just to give it a little bit of more texture and uh, because with the art journal page you don't want to add too too much bulk so I was trying to figure out a way to add more texture without um, you know building up my page too much and that is how it's going to look just like that I love it and then I did uh, use some of the residue like the color from the one of my paint brushes when I was trying to spread around the color the, um, the Ken Oliver powders and it had just a little bit of like a brown on it and I just kind of brushed it on a little bit on the metal pieces that I had used gesso on just to um, tone it down, tone down the white a little bit. I didn't want it too stark white because I want my uh, sentiment to stand out which is this right here. It says choose happiness. I love it. It is from Kaiser Craft and it comes in this little box of tons of little sentiments um, and just kind of little quotes and things and I just paint it with some gesso. I'm going to add it to the tag in just a moment but I am just adding some other little mechanicals or like these little screws um, and they're already kind of like a rusty color which is really nice so I don't have to do anything to them and I'm just adding them with some Fabri-Tac. 
All right, so I have all of the embellishments down and then I'm going to add my sentiment. It says choose happiness. And I actually did uh, emboss it with some white embossing powder because I wanted it to be super white. It just wasn't getting as white as I would want it to be. So see how it kind of just stands out a little bit more. And I added it with some Fabri-Tac and now I am adding some white splatters. So first I use some gesso watered down and it just gives it a little bit more texture rather than just the, um, the picket fence distress spray that I always love to use. Uh, this kind of, oh, Abby's saying hi. <laughs> she always is wanting to say hi. Uh, anyway, so the watered down gesso just gives more texture and kind of like globs of paint and I don't know it's just a little bit different rather than like I said the uh, the picket fence distress spray so it's really simple to do I use, do it in the cap of my gesso um, but you can do it you know just add a little bit of gesso to your paintbrush and then mix it with a little bit of water uh, and you could see the um, the color or the gesso I'm sorry kind of seep into the color so it kind of like mixes a little bit um, and I actually like that for this project I didn't really want too much white on it um, just a just a little bit to give it more interest and texture so just giving you an up close look and there is my project. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. Here is a uh, closer look at the um, project right here. Be sure to check out my website, tiffanysolorio.com, and also check out my Patreon page. Lots of different things going on over there. Leave me a comment down below and don't forget to hit that subscribe button and share this video on social media. I would really appreciate it. I want to thank you guys again and I will catch you guys later. Bye.